What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets with Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started, ranking number five and number six on the Mets top 10 prospect list, updated for 2021. From number nine and 10, it was Junior Santos. It was Robert Dominguez. Number eight, it was Khalil Lee. It was number seven, Mark Fientos. Before I get started with number five and six ranked in the Mets top prospect list, don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this video, smash on that like button. If you enjoy all my content, all my videos, you want to see more, want to get notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, everybody, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys. So number six on the Mets top prospect list of 2021 is none other than college phenom from Mississippi State, J.T. Jin. J.T. Jin is a 21-year-old right-handed pitcher, 6'2", 200 pounds, throws right-handed. As I just said, from Mississippi State, he was selected 52 overall in the 2020 MLB draft by the New York Mets. He was a sophomore when the Mets drafted him. Unfortunately for him, Tommy John surgery derailed him in his sophomore season at Mississippi State. But when the Mets drafted him, they already knew that he was going to have Tommy John surgery, but they did not care. A few reasons why that is, is I will get to in a few seconds. But out of high school, JT Jin was selected by the Dodgers, but money was an issue when it came to the sign-in bonus that he would have got from the Dodgers that tried to take him and draft him out of high school, but he decided to go to Mississippi State, which was good for the Mets because he is a powerful arm. He is a big-time collegiate athlete. He is one of, the, one of the best pitches in that draft in 2020. So the Mets did get luck, lucky with JT Jin when he decided to go to college and the Mets selected him 52nd overall. So when it comes to why the Mets took him 52nd overall, there was a couple of things. He has a tough fastball in the mid to high 90s, around 95, 96, 97 miles an hour. And he also throws a slider and changeup that all are saying, all the sources, all the scouts that were saying he has wipeout slider and wipeout changer, changeup potential, which is always good to see a three pitch pitcher coming out of college who has basically found a way to perfect those pitches at the moment. Now, we haven't seen him in the Mets minor league system yet, obviously because of Tommy John and the pandemic. So this is a big year for uh, JT Jin so we can come back from Tommy John and see what he can do at the professional level level in the minors. Probably end up in rookie, rookie ball, most likely, where most of these guys end up in the uh, startup in the beginning when they, come out of, when they come out of the draft most of the time. So – We'll see what he does in the professional uh, when he hits the professional league and see what he does. Obviously, he was very good in college. Uh, why do people love this guy? So, again, he does one of the best fastballs in the 2020 draft. So, all the scouts were saying that he has the best fastball from all the pitchers that were drafted in 2020, which is very nice to see. So, JT Jin and the Mets – could be a potential star in the Mets rotation in years to come. So when it comes to JT Jin, everybody, his estimated time of arrival to the big leagues is 2023. So that goes in line with Matthew Allen, could be possibly the year after with Junior Santos and Robert Dominguez. So there's a lot of big young arms in the Mets top 10 that can potentially be a part of this rotation in the next couple of years. And when it comes to JT Jin and his stats from Mississippi state, because it's the only thing we can rely on right now, because he hasn't pitched in the Mets minor league system professionally as of yet, because of Tommy John, we're going to look at his stats right now for the, for the two years he was at Mississippi state. So right here in 2019, he had a 3.13 ERA, eight wins, four losses, 17 appearances, one complete game, 
in 86 and in 72 hits, 35 runs, 30 earned runs, 19 walks, 105 strikeouts in 17 games. And he had he had he gave up a batting average of 220 two hitters. So you could see the potential that this kid has. And JT Jin in his freshman year at Mississippi State was dominant. And there was so many good things to come in 2020. But unfortunately, he only he made one start because he had to have Tommy John surgery. So unfortunately, we only have one full year to look at. He did have a minor injury in 2019. So the biggest issue when it comes to JT Jin is durability. Can this kid stay healthy? Because if he can stay healthy, of course you can say that with every player that a team drafts. But with JT Jin, durability is an issue when it comes to the scouts' reports. And if he can be durable and remain healthy and come back solid and what he was after Tommy John surgery, he is young. He's only 21. He can be a part of this Mets rotation in the coming years. And with the stuff that he has, the fastball, the slider, the changeup, he has the potential to be a big league starting pitcher, possibly a number two, possibly a number one, but looking like he could be a two or number three for this Mets rotation in the coming years. JT Jin is the number six ranked prospect in the Mets top 10 prospect Updated for 2021, the right-handed JT Jin out of Mississippi State, everybody. So that's your number six ranked guy, JT Jin. Now, when it comes to the number five ranked prospect in the, the Mets top 10 prospect list of 2021, it is none other than third baseman top prospect Brett Beatty. The 21-year-old third baseman is an interesting look and piece that the Mets got. And what I'm thinking, and he was drafted in 2019 in the MLB draft, Brett Beatty is, will be an interesting piece for this New York Mets team because he plays third base. Because there is questions about J.D. Davis at third base uh, going along in the future for this Mets team. Brett Beatty can be a really big possibility and a guy that the Mets can look at in a year or two where Brett Beatty can be the Mets starting third baseman in the future. Obviously he has to progress. Obviously that he has to show that he can be a big leaguer and he can do what he has to do in the minor leagues and progress gradually. So he can make this big league Mets team in the next coming years. And when we look at Brett Beatty and who he is as a player and his bio a little bit, he's a 6'3", 210-pound guy, big guy, left-handed batter, left side of the plate. He is a good third baseman. Defensively, he's still got to do a little bit of work, but he's pretty good. Offensively, he's supposed to have good-time power, big-time power. He was drafted out of high school from Lake Travis High School in Austin, Texas. And Brett Beatty is an interesting, interesting piece that I really, really like in this Mets top 10. He is one of my favorite prospects in the Mets system. I did follow him a little bit in, uh, when he was in high school because I did play high school baseball and I did play college baseball. So I did look a little bit into these type of players and I, I played third base. So I really like when... Um, a player could be drafted by the Mets. And when you look at the scouting report and everything like that from college and high school athletes, I really like to look at the third baseman because I have a little bit of bias towards third baseman is why Dave Wright is my favorite player. But Brett Beatty is a potential star in the making for the Mets as the everyday third baseman in the next coming years. And his estimated time of arrival to the big leagues is 2023. And as you noticed in the last couple of videos from when we rate from seven to 10, 2023 and 2024 is a huge couple of years for the Mets and the potential that they have with their top 10 list, because a lot of their guys in the top 10 are coming 
in the big leagues, most likely an estimated arrival in 2023 and 2024. So those are two big years that the Mets are potentially looking at for these players in their top 10. The majority of them are supposed to come to the big leagues in 2023 and 2024. And there is no difference with Brett Beatty. He is estimated time arrival of 2023. So it's two years away for him, but it also depends if he picks it up and he progresses the way the Mets expect him to at third base and offensively. He could come sooner, but it really depends on J.D. Davis and if the Mets think Brett Beatty is ready. And when it comes to Brett Beatty and his stats, we're going to look at it right here. Obviously, he pitched, He sorry, he played uh, for Brooklyn and Kingsport in rookie ball and the lower minor league uh, A. In 2019, obviously 2020, there was no minor league season, so he lost out on that year. But he does have some stats to look at in 2019. At the age of 19 in Brooklyn, you can see altogether he was with three teams altogether. He was with the Brooklyn uh, Cyclones, he was with the Kingsport Mets, and the Mets Golf, uh, the Golf League also. So that's all three teams right here. And when you look at his stats... They were decent. They were pretty good. But his average was a little, little bit under the low end. He batted 200 in Brooklyn, 222 at Kingsport. And in the Gulf Coast League, he batted 350. So it looked like he showed a little bit more in the Gulf Coast League, but it was only with five games. The bigger games was with Kingsport, 42 games, where he had 12 doubles, two triples, six home runs, 22 RBIs in 42 games. So average, obviously his average is something that we have to look at. His on-base percentage was pretty good. His slugging percentage was pretty good at 339 and 437 with Kingsport. And with Brooklyn, he was 529 on-base percentage and a slugging percentage of 300. So when it comes to Brett Beatty, he does got to work on his average, but he's a young kid. You know, you're not expecting him to hit 350, but we would like to see over the next year or two him progress well with getting contact on that ball and increasing his average to at least 250, 260, 270. That's where you like to see. Defensively, he is pretty good. So I expect him to be a good defensive third baseman. So it is interesting to look at Brett Beatty, especially when the Mets have questions at third base at the major league level with J.D. Davis. Brett Beatty is one of the guys you can look at in the next year or two if he progresses well in the minor league system where the Mets might have to think twice about making a big trade at the deadline to acquire a third baseman if J.D. Davis is not up to par. And it's something to look at also if the Mets do go and try to get Chris Bryan at the trade deadline, which it is a possibility when it comes to the Mets, especially if J.D. Davis does not perform at third base the Mets probably will not extend Chris Bryant. So Brett Beatty and Mark Vientos, the two of the Mets third baseman in the top prospect list is something to look at in the coming year or two when it comes to Brett Beatty and Mark Vientos, because it is a big thing and we need these guys to develop. Not only could they be trade bait at the trade deadline, but in the years, in the, in the off season to come in 2022, it is very possible that these guys could be trade bait if the Mets try to get somebody like a Chapman or Ramirez if J.D. Davis does not pan out at third base. So, guys, this was the ranking of the number six and number five player prospects in the New York Mets top ten prospect list of 2021. Number six was J.T. Jin, and number five was Brett Beatty. I want to thank you guys for tuning into this video, the Mets Top 10 Prospect List of 2021. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this video, smash on that like button. And if you enjoy my content, all my videos, guys, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button so you get notified when I post my videos and when I go live. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.